uh, on what they call this uh, software bus that's, that's topic topic based. So you can say, well, I'm a publisher for uh, the lock, the, the front door lock in Nick's house. To it. And subscribers can come along and say, well, I'm interested in that. Can you just let me know any time some message arrives for the lock uh, in Nick's house to it? So you'll need some security built in as well. Uh, but then automatically, every time that message gets published, anybody who's subscribed to that will receive it. So it's, it's rather like an email distribution list. Like you sign up to a distribution list, one person sends up a message, and everybody gets it. Uh, what the subscribers have to do then is to decide what to do. But when you do receive this message, what do you want them to do uh, for it? Now, we'll be having a look at that in the lab, uh, and the lab will take you through uh, setting up what this MQTT is uh, overall, but then also showing you how you might link, say, um, an Android device to it to monitor one of these queues, uh, how you might set your fidgets up, both to be publishers, to send messages out, so your, your little slider or your button can be sending a message out saying, I've moved, I've moved, I've moved, sending a message out, and then anybody who subscribes to that can, can receive that message. Or a motor subscribing to that slider message going out. It's a very nice technique, but it's just different to setting up the database. And if you're going to use this approach, which is a, the approach that is really used by IoT devices, uh, it means abandoning the database approach uh, to use it. Um, so that's just what's, as I say, going on in um, the lab sessions this week. The other thing that's going on today, just sort of finish off for the, uh, the last sort of uh, 15 minutes or so, that were, last week we were looking at um, a bit of intelligent processing on the, on the devices so that perhaps they could send out a summary of what they were doing. Rather than just streaming out piles of data, you would just perhaps sort of send a, a summary of, of what's going on to it there. Uh, we didn't really look at what's called the semantic technologies, the, the meaning of what's happening uh, out there. We've looked at what sort of operating systems, protocols that are used between these nodes. Uh, we have here a, a, a sync node, which is typically a data collector, uh, or it's some, somewhere where all the nodes uh, work through, and that sync node brings in the data and then perhaps sort of, as I say, perhaps uh, sends out some uh, aggregation uh, of, your, of your data. Might be done at the sync node, might be done a bit of the processing in the actual nodes themselves. To, to sort of work with. Uh, the other side of it, there might be something sitting out there on the cloud, up there at the top, that inference processing, where we want to give access to that data to the outside world. Uh, so we were needing to provide some sort of web service for people to use. And that's the sort of thing in red that were, uh, sorry, the, the, the blue things, where we're going to have a look at uh, what's, what's going on this week. The interoperability part to this. Making your node data so it's recognisable by the outside world. Uh, you could just have inter-node messages going on in its own little private protocol to it. Because if it's going around your own network and it's not connecting to the outside world, they don't need to know. Rather like you and your, your partner or something like that, or your kids, you might have a little sort of home language between yourselves. You, you develop a little your own little talk or your own language between yourselves. Certainly I've got a couple of daughters who invented their own language between themselves just so that we couldn't understand them uh, to, it, you know, to, to sort of hide that. It doesn't really matter if it's just between those sorts of things, but if they want to communicate with the outside world, you've got to speak, in this case, in here, we've got to speak English. So it doesn't matter what you might speak at home. You might speak uh, Chinese, Urdu, whatever at home. To it. But if you want to communicate with people in the outside world, then in, a, you know, in our situation, you've got to communicate in English. So you have to have something that's interoperable, interoperable uh, for it. Uh, and so, depends on where you are. But certainly once you get past that sync node or onto the gateway to the outside, then you're into talking HTTP, and you're having to sort of talk a specific format 
uh, for, 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 for this. Um, so all these things that are being more and more connected to the web, because everybody else talks a certain language, the things that are connecting have to learn to talk that language. Uh, you can't expect that whatever you invent is going to take over the world. It does happen. It does happen. People do release a protocol that suddenly everybody else uh, takes, up, takes upon. Uh, anybody who's used BitTorrent, for example, if you use torrenting to, for file downloads, that was invented by one guy. He invented the whole BitTorrent protocol, and then all of a sudden, everybody's making BitTorrent servers and clients, and people are downloading files, all using this protocol invented by one person. It's unlikely you're going to get into that situation. I'm not saying that you can't, but more likely that you want to just speak what the world already speaks uh, for it. Now, that means working to a standard. It means working to an existing standard that people uh, know, you in our case, the Greek standard being the sort of English. There's lots of standards about. It's not to say that English is the best one. It's the one that we're using here. Uh, there's lots of standards out there to communicate in this, this web of things. Uh, there's various consortium uh, or consortia uh, evolved that are developing standards to, to sort of work with. And it depends at what level you're communicating. There's, there's ones where you're talking to a specific community uh, of, of people, and there's ones where you're talking, say, at a lower level, that you're actually just talking over the network. You want to get on from the network, not necessarily talking to the outside world. Just as an analogy there, the low-level protocol that we've got in here, that we see what we're speaking in English, but you move out of here, and everybody, yeah, lots and lots of people all around the place speak English, but start talking about sensor networks and nodes, and you know, the capacity of these nodes, and people's eyes just glaze over, and like that. They are outside that vocabulary. You've got a specialised thing for talking about Internet of Things, and a specialised area for this geospatial consortium or whatever. They are trying to encourage some sort of interoperability uh, for a wider Internet of Things data uh, to work with. So that if you're collecting data on geospatial things, and whether it's mapping and uh, perhaps sort of picking out information just on what's in that local area or whatever, you've got to agree, uh, if, you, if you're sending that data across, on what format some of these might be, what data formats are coming out, what tags you're having, how you represent location, that you agree we're using latitude and longitude as opposed to other ways of coordinate data. Uh, if you want to drag some data in, what, it, what format it might be available into the outside world. Uh, how, if you're looking for things, how you might sort of represent tags uh, for it. So that if I just splurge that data out to you and said, OK, here's some data. Can you just uh, do something with it? Now, because we're in this class, then you know, hopefully you might sort of realise mm, one of those looks like a time uh, inside it. Uh, 15, or by C, uh, an intelligent guess might be that that's 15 degrees centigrade. But again, you're doing intelligent guesses there. You can't be <laughs> sure that that's 15 degrees. It might be 15 degrees in zone C for it. And that 15 degrees might be 15 in Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin, or something like that. You know, it's sort of close to absolute zero. Uh, are those things coordinates? And if, if so, in which is, is it latitude first or longitude? Uh, or is it something to do with noise levels? Just looking at that, you can make an intelligent guess, but you don't necessarily know. So what we have to do is mark it up in some way to indicate what's what. That you know, these sort of things are latitude, longitude, time, unit of measurement or something. We need to indicate it to, 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 to the sort of outside world. So it would be better if we could be specific and give something like XML as a representation of that and say, right, this is a sensor reading with a value tag in there, a unit tag, a time tag, a longitude tag. So that somebody who's receiving that data can then know exactly what you're talking about. And say, okay, look out to that sensor reading, can you just identify something? Now again, when you're doing your assignment, when you're transmitting this data out to somewhere else, you may know what format the data is in. You may know that when you send out that value of 100.6, 
that it represents the angle to which to turn the motor. But if you send it off to somebody, some other remote machine, they've either got to know that that's exactly what you're sending rather than the temperature, <coughs> and how to interpret it. So what we tend to do is to wrap it up in some sort of data wrapper, either XML or JSON, to indicate what that actual thing is. And that's where it's in the assignment. It's saying when you are communicating with the outside world, wrap it up in some way, either XML, the same sort of thing uh, going through, or perhaps there in JSON, uh, and get that standard agreed by both sides. So you then publish that to your uh, prospective readers and say, I'll be sending you something called a sensor reading with these tags inside. So in your assignment, you're going to have to decide what one of those sensor readings actually is. Now currently, one of the things I've just suggested is that you have uh, a name of sensor and a value for it. Now if you want to send out a group of sensors, that becomes a bit trickier. You, you don't mind have an array of them. You might want to include uh, positional data in there or time data that you're sending. That sort of part's up to you to decide in your assignment. But you do need some way of adding some meaning to your data. And that's what's meant by the, you know, the word semantics. Semantics is about meaning. What does that actual something actually represent for it?